We didn't have any idea because we hadn't attempted something like this. So we were looking for ways to get more bang for our buck and, and this is one we took a chance on and we didn't know what was going to happen. The year that we couldn't meet in person, that was an incredible year. It was like being back in TV where we did a one hour production and luckily, and they're all here right now recording right now. Luckily we had a TV crew that had experience because I, I don't really think that uh, we could have pulled that off without having that background and, and it was something that we were really proud of that we, uh, we got that done. My absolute favorite memory uh, was one of the early years uh, we were giving away a vehicle and we brought Mr. C up to, to pull the the ball out of the tumbler. Well, Mr. C had pulled his own number. So, and it was great and everybody loved that, but that's my all time favorite memory. The whole thing is fun, but I really like the social hour from five to six. I get there at the beginning and I, I like it because I find myself talking to people that maybe I only see once a year or twice a year. And it's so cool to interact with people that you normally don't get to talk to. And that happens every year during the social hour. What is important to me, uh, our Catholic education is important to me. I believe in it. I believe in Catholic education. I believe in our school. I believe in our churches. So I think it's important to do. We've established that it's a huge fundraiser. So it needs to keep going. It needs to stay huge. For Marty, he's been involved 20 years. I've been over 10 years, but involved for 10 years. And then you maybe start getting some kindergartners or first graders that their parents say, hey, it's time for me to get involved. And maybe some more people taking over for the next 10 or 20 years, that'd be, that'd be cool to see. We started this deal 20 years ago, 20 years, 10 wow. years by me, 10 years by him. Uh, so thank you for coming and welcome, welcome to, to the, the 20th, 20th Green. It all comes back to being able to read. And so starting out at a first grade level, that's the foundation for reading, for becoming a strong reader for the rest of your life. Reading is just critical. I, I mean, I feel like it's the most critical piece of what we do at McDade. Um, and I love math too, but reading encompasses everything. At a younger age, we talk a lot about kids learning to read and teaching kids how to read. Um, but when they get older, we really use reading to learn. In second grade, they should have a lot of letter, letter sounds and phonics knowledge and know how to put words together. So now we're expanding on that and building on the building blocks that they are know. A good reading curriculum will have that outlined, what each grade is responsible for, and hopefully challenge the kids. It won't be the same for everybody, but they'll, they'll have remedies for those kids who may come with gaps or who may not have caught on as quickly, but it'll also challenge those who have it. They've had it since preschool and they're ready to move on. We want a curriculum that will hit all of our kids. Our current reading series has a copyright date of 2004. Um, a lot of the supplemental materials that come with it are out of print. We can't even get them anymore. Um, this, the books are in good shape but they're, they're dated and so we just we just need to update our materials um, and, and give kids fresh, interesting, entertaining um, stories to read. When that happens, um, obviously the state standards change and our teaching needs to change, how we're delivering instruction. We're meeting the needs of our students, but we could be doing better with better materials. There's been new science, the science of reading, which focuses a lot more on phonics. Um, so we, we owe that to our kids to keep up with 
teaching practices and new research and and to get them what they need to learn. One thing we're really conscious of is to find stories that are of high quality, high quality texts and aren't too secular in nature. Um, we want to stay true to our Catholic beliefs. We want to stay true to what the church teaches. And you know, in this day and age, there's a lot of things out there for kids that don't align with the church beliefs. So we also, that's a process too, to weed through all the materials to make sure that we're, we're not only getting quality text, but we're getting appropriate text for children. Reading series are very involved and very expensive. Um, you can spend anywhere from $20,000 to $60,000 on a reading series. Do we need a high-end reading series? Maybe not, but we do need to make sure it's a quality reading series. Um, and you know, the old adage, you get what you pay for, is probably true in, in this too. Um, probably gonna need to find something in the middle of that twenty dollars to $60,000 range. I want the phonics piece where we are doing that new science of reading and giving the kids those foundational skills, but I also hope that we find something that has good characters and good discussion pieces and um, literature that will make them fall in love with reading, not just learn how to read, but learn how to love reading and become lifelong learners. There's a couple of different purposes. We want to unite our community. Uh, another purpose is just to connect with our students, and that's very difficult to do. And there are professionals that do that for a living and they're good at it. Um, they have engaging stories, life, um, faith journeys that they're able, the students are able to connect with. Um, it is engaging for kids, it's exciting for kids. Um, they learn so much more from listening and, and being part of a presentation like that than they're ever going to learn by just reading the book. Our mission statement is to support our parents in educating their, student, their children in the faith. And so we really want to um, help our parents give them some foundational um, items to build off of and so by bringing somebody in and um, talking to our parents they'll get some ideas and um, they'll also get some motivation themselves. I would also like to have that opportunity for teachers. I'd like to bring in some speakers that would be motivating for our teachers and engaging. We just don't have the funds to do that and that's something that I've always thought would be awesome if we would be able to do that. Many speakers do have a flat rate and so you're talking thousands of dollars just to bring in a, a speaker. And um, with our, our budget is designed to help us just do the basics in our school to, to pay our teachers to um, take care of a building and heat our building and um, do a little bit of extra. It would be really nice to just have a place that we could go and pay for these speakers to come in. The air conditioning has been on uh, our list, our wish list, for a number of years. Um, ever since I stepped into the superintendent's office, uh, that's been one of the, the items on our list, our, our wish list, of what are some things that we could do to improve our facilities. Uh, we were just astounded by the support that we received on Giving Day for uh, a new air system and a new air conditioning system in the McDade gym. And one of the things that we'll have to put in our budget line item then will be the expense and what that's going to look like moving forward. That's something that we would like to be comforted by that we have the money set aside not only for the equipment, the labor, and the installation, but also for the operating costs for a few years as we absorb that into our budget. It's incredibly important. We are not here if it's not for the endowment and we are not here if it's not for this event. That's why it's important, that's why I encourage people to give. And when they give to the endowment, they're giving to the school. When you say generosity, I mean, holy cow, we're, we're not only uh, having huge uh, live auction, silent auction, but uh, the fundraiser, the specific need, seems to meet the goal every year and it's incredible. With those funds that uh, we generate here tonight at Green, it gives us an opportunity then to put something in place that's not just going to benefit us here and now for future generations to come. <music>